Um, I just saw something on one of my social medias that has nothing to do with this video, but, um, I don't know how to react to it or deal with it, so, um, I'm making this video to try to ignore it, I guess. Um, so, about an hour and a half ago, I just finished season two of 13 Reasons Why. And let me just say, I'm not okay right now. I, th I, I could have finished it sooner, but like I was really tired this week, so I couldn't just stay up and watch it. But I am a good binger because I have finished it. It's Sunday, and I finished. Yeah, I have finished it. And I know there are other people who have finished it too, but there are a lot of people who have not, because they can't get through the show. Because, you know, it's very, some parts are very hard to watch. And I did have to stop watching at some parts where I'm just like, I can't, I need a moment. Um, and they don't have Netflix. There are a bunch of reasons why people haven't finished it, but there are people who have. But, you know, since it's so soon, if you haven't finished it, do not watch this video. There will be spoilers. Obviously. I'm just, just saying don't. Don't watch it. Um, so I saw a post saying um, that's saying reasons thirteen reasons why thirteen reasons why it's a garbage show. I read the book before the show was even thought of. I read it in like seventh grade, I think, and I loved the book. I have it somewhere. Somewhere, I've read a lot of books. Um, and then when the show came out, I'm like okay um and i watched it all through and i there are a lot of a lot of series mostly movies that um ruin books i'm not gonna say who <coughs> maze runner <coughs> but i actually liked what the show 13 reasons why i did with the book i think it was really good how they put like each tape as an episode and I think some parts of it kind of got taken the wrong way. I don't know how to explain it. I have an unpopular opinion and which is that I do in fact really like the show. Um, so I'm just going to go down this list and explain some things and then I'm going to talk about how I feel that season two is over <laughs> and the way it ended. <laughs> is that? was a chip under my eye <laughs> and I'm going to explain my feelings about season two and again how it ended I'm not okay is there a chip on my phone <laughs> I need to stop eating chips okay so the first thing on this list comes up one two about three times so I'll address it last the second thing on this list is it glorifies depression. Now, I don't know what they mean by it glorifies depression, but it's not saying that depression is like a good thing to have and it's amazing. You should all try being depressed. It's, it's showing that, you know, people do have it. And I know another, oh, that was actually the fourth thing on this list. And, okay, it's, it's actually showing things how some people, not everyone, there are re different reasons why people have depressions or get depressed. But um, it's not glorifying her depression. It's not saying that it was amazing and because it led her to kill herself. So, I mean... I don't, I don't even know how to explain this one, but I don't think it's glorifying her depression. Especially since so many people are like against it in the show. Especially in the second season, like with the mom whose child also killed herself, who's hanging out with Hannah's mom in the beginning, like, I don't know. 
The third one is saying it makes suicide an option. I didn't mention this, so I have to mention it now, and you can look at three memes while I say it. Um, Hannah's mom gave Clay at the end of season two a list that Hannah made called 13 Reasons Why Not To. So it's not saying that suicide is an option, because even Hannah made a list of why she shouldn't do it. So It's not making suicide an option. People already think that suicide is an option. I don't, <laughs> I just realized that this is the type of thing to get demonetized, but your girl's not monetized, so I'm good. Okay, it's not making suicide an option. People already think that, and that's what this show is showing you. <laughs> like, people think that, and then they choose that, and then this is what can happen. These are the effects. It's not saying, hey, go out and kill yourself. Life will be great. Because life isn't great. Your life might be over, but it's showing how these people are affected. Like, these people that Hannah did care about. Her parents, Clay. She still cared about Jessica. Um, like, all these people were affected. And it's not saying, hey, this is an option that you should take. This is an option that people do take. And it's not good. The fourth one is Hannah Baker wasn't depressed. She was a victim with a princess complex who never once looked for help. She was depressed. And people say that her re her reasons why before she was raped weren't valid. She felt alone. You guys are dismissing her depression just like some people in the school did like some people in the courtroom did in season two that's this is why sometimes people don't go for help because people just like to dim dismiss it people don't like to hear that their problems aren't important because their problems are their own and to them they are a problem like first world problems sometimes <laughs> i guess i know first world problems are first world problems but sometimes, since they are our problems, they can go out of hand and get really frustrating. Or like what Hannah went through, she felt alone and she felt lonely, like she said. And, and, in the second season, we found out that her family had a history of depression, anxiety, whatever. So yes, I feel like she was depressed. Thank you, whoever made this list. She was a victim. Thank you. It's not, it's not, I don't, I don't even know if it's sarcastically saying that, but she was a freaking victim, especially at the end when she was raped by Bryce. Um, I don't know what they mean by princess complex, because especially in the second season, um, we found out that she, there were more things that we didn't hear on the tapes. And she did look for help. She talked to, she gave, she talked to, what's his name with the poems, Ryan. She talked to Tony. She talked to Clay. She talked to Clay after they got high. She talked to Tony multiple times. She talked to Ryan, especially with her poems. She tried to talk to her teacher with that anonymous note, but then the teacher kind of dismissed it. Kind of, but kind of did, kind of didn't. She went to um, the guidance counselor. Who, and, you know, he said he couldn't do anything. He feels super bad about it, but he didn't do anything. She went, she, um, she talked to Zach a lot during the summer. Like, she was looking for help. <laughs> she was saying, hey, this is how I feel. But pe her mom, too. I'm not saying her mom was bad mom, but, like, she brought up some of these things to her mom and her mom kind of dismissed it a little bit so um what's after that it glorifies suicide again i don't know what they mean by glorify they're not saying that's a good option they're saying that's pe that's something that people do and people do commit suicide and it's not saying suicide is a great thing to do it's just a thing that people do and these are the effects of it outside of yourself. I'm not saying that people who kill themselves are selfish, but like, 
it does affect other people and that's what it's showing how it affected everyone else at liberty high after she killed herself um it shows a suicide on screen okay yeah maybe they shouldn't have, so i have nothing to say about that they probably shouldn't have showed the suicide on screen fine i'll give you that one it romanticizes revenge and makes people think that guilting your enemies is the best room that is not <laughs> That is not what she was doing. This even came up in court in the second season. The prosecution, no, she was defense. Cause she was defending the school. So the defense on, in the court case, she acted like prosecution, so I'm calling her prosecution. But like the defense for the school said to Tony, was she doing this for revenge? And Tony said, no, she wasn't. She was trying to show them how she felt because when she did that while she was alive no one was really listening so now she's showing them after she's not getting revenge you know who got revenge clay got revenge clay this is true um if it weren't for her tapes you know we don't know if justin would have to actually told jessica finally that she got raped we don't know if courtney would have Ever came out and admitted that she loved Hannah we don't know if Clay knew would have eventually known how much he did mean to her we don't know any of that stuff she was just trying to tell them how she felt except for Bryce I feel like she was trying to get revenge on not again not revenge but like trying to let him know he is a horrible person a horrible person what's after that shows rape on screen same with the showing suicide on screen i'll give you that that wasn't good it misrepresents people melt mental illnesses i don't know why these people are depending on one show to represent everyone with mental illnesses like people with mental illnesses like to say it shows up differently in different people people with depression have it for different reasons they express it differently their signs are different people with anxiety it's the same people with ADHD it's the same how can you represent everyone with all these mental illnesses with one character in one show you can't and you know what maybe some people with depression they may have gone through this you don't know you can't it's not, i don't think it's mis in representing them i think it's representing some specific sort of depression and or whatever she was going through stop turning off i don't know it makes the depression look like an overreaction to any mild convenience again like I said, it was what she was going through. This is how she felt. And when people dismiss people with depression, everyone gets mad. But this is what these people are doing. They're dismissing her problems. Like, some of them may seem like, okay. But like, all of it together, built up together inside of her, over the span of what seemed like a month or two, not that long, it's just she couldn't deal with it so I don't so yeah I've, I've talked about I've said that like multiple times okay and the one that comes up three times it's number one number five and number 11 and the number 11 is bold it glorifies suicide no it doesn't I think I'm saying it oh my god I think I'm saying it the same oh wait did I talk about it glorifying suicide already when I said five, oops. But yeah, I don't think it's glorifying suicide. I think it's saying, hey, this is what happens. So now that I'm done with that list, let me talk about season two. So, so as soon as we got into the show, Sky and Claire together, fine, whatever. I did like him with Hannah, I mean, Sky is going through some things as well, and it finally builds up, and she's pushed over the edge because she finds out Clay is still in love with Hannah. Um, that's another thing. 
people are mad because it's saying it's showing that if clay loved her more she would have survived it's not saying that it's saying that when people kill themselves people who are left behind believe that they could have done something to save her people actually think that if someone close to you kills yourself you wonder if i had loved them more would they still be alive this is what they're showing they're showing what people think after someone kills themselves like they're they're showing what people go through to lead up some people not everyone people kill themselves and then what can happen after they talk about a lot of topics in this show because they're ending with an almost school shooting in season two and then they literally just end the season that's why i'm mad i need to put a lot of spoiler warnings in this because i really just blew that up they talk about the rape culture they the rape culture is so accurate okay so hannah's mom she was like i don't know any woman who hasn't been sexually harassed or like anything like that like yes yes me and all my friends literally we always post about this cre the creepy guys on the train or in manhattan just like talking to us trying to touch us like looking at us it's so weird and wrong and uh like literally i went to i went somewhere with my mom and then we go and then sh we got off the escalator and she's like i was about to punch some guy i was like what <laughs> she's like because he was staring at you and he's like staring at your butt and your boobs i'm like oh pff, i didn't even notice and then there was this another time i was on a train and the lady was like, here, you want to take my seat? I'm getting off. I was like, what? She's like, nothing. This is that guy is looking at you weird. And I thought, you just want to sit over here away from him. I was like, oh, no, it's my stuff too, but thank you. Like, it's kind of bad that this was, like, when I was younger, too. Like, maybe 13, 14? Ele ele somewhere between 11 and 14. That's when those two things happened. It's like, how young... How young do these things start for girls? Like, it's just, it's wrong. So yeah, they're saying that. And then Bryce, again, spoilers, Bryce gets off, apparently, within like 10 days, he's back at home, because his dad is rich, and his dad doesn't want to believe that his son is like this. But his mom, low-key knew from the jump when people started talking about this, she's like, that's not the boy I raised, but... <laughs> Cause she doesn't want to dismiss it people want to dismiss jessica's claims and say oh she was just embarrassed that she cheated on justin that's not what happened and then he committed perjury too why did he not go to jail for committing perjury he specifically lied on the stand then when he got home he started thinking about it he started thinking about how he raped jessica and hannah and then he got that happened marcus committed perjury too i don't think i don't think i don't well, i mean i know something happened to him but i don't really remember off the top of my head what happened to him but he committed perjury too that's illegal um it's funny it's funny um i was texting my friend and we were talking about him, Bryce having a girlfriend. I was like, I didn't even know he was attracted to consent. I didn't think that was true. And apparently it's not. So, yeah. Uh, he's not. He's not attracted to girls who consent. But, I mean... Like, just like we found out about Justin in the first season, he did have problems too. He's he's lonely because his parents are never home. But that is no excuse for being a serial rapist. Hannah, Jessica, I was gonna say Justin, that's what. Jessica, Chloe. It's just so bad. It's so bad. Not the show. Bryce. Oh my God. Okay. Um, let's talk about something happier, like, <coughs> Tony and his new mans, okay, they're perfect, 
They were perfect for each other. They're amazing together. God, and Tony, Tony being mad a lot and fighting people a lot. I like that he sticks up for his friends and he does get mad, but I don't even think there's that much to talk about. I just kind of wanted to get off the rape conversation. Um, Justin and Clay being brothers. Okay, Justin and Clay, their new friendship is everything to me. He, did my light just go off? Whatever. Oh, I didn't take my allergy medicine. Clay going back to wherever they were, wherever he was for Justin, getting him clean. And Justin kept on having a few relapses, but Clay trying to get him clean and then asking if his parents could adopt him is so amazing. It, Justin was such an, it was in such a toxic situation and him living with Clay's family is so good for him. I don't know how I feel about, um, that, uh, what that last episode? I feel so bad. Alex realized that he still loved Jessica for the whole season and then he was so upset when Justin got back because he's like, oh my god, Jessica still loves him. But then Alex is like, hey, are we technically dating? And Jessica's like, yeah, we're technically dating again. Then they go to the dance, then they kiss, and it's great. But then Justin sees it, gets sad. He's supporting them too. He totally supports them. He's not trying to bring them down. But then he goes to sit alone because he's upset. Then Jessica goes in to comfort him, and then they hook up. And Chloe being pregnant by a rapist. Again, don't want to get back into the rape conversation. But I understand kind of why Chloe didn't want to admit that she got raped by Bryce, even though she knows damn well she did. She loved him. She loves him. And just like her dad, she doesn't want to see that what he's doing is wrong. So she's kind of just pushing it out of her head, being in denial about it. But Jess is like, come on. You really just got to admit it, man. But now she's pregnant and we kind of just dismissed it after that. Chloe's like, I'm pregnant. They cut to the next scene and we don't see Chloe again. And then the season ends. Um. Oh, can we talk about something that makes me really happy? Hannah and Zach. Like I said, this show expands way more on the book. And, oh, they really went there with Hannah's relationship with Zach. People, I, I'm saying what people are posting. They're saying that Hannah is a, in fact, a girl who's going around. She's still not. She had relations <laughs> with two people. One of them, she did not agree to. Another one of them was one guy that she had genuine feelings for. For good reason, because he is Zach Dempsey, and he has Ross Butler's face and body, and he's Ross Butler. Um, so it was one person that she cared about, and who was a nice guy. Just because they did it a lot doesn't mean anything. They were together, technically. Just because no one knew doesn't mean anything. And can we just admire how no one knew for like a year? About, again, don't know how, what this timeline is. But we need more guys like Zach Dempsey. No one knew. Not even his best friends. He didn't tell anyone. Partially because he was embarrassed. Partially because he's a coward and doesn't want to talk about his feelings, which are things that he has said. But also, he's a good guy. And he is Ross Butler. I, I need to make a whole video about why I love Ross Butler. There are so many reasons. So many reasons. Reason one is his face. <laughs> okay, <laughs> before this becomes his Ross Butler fan account, um, what else did I love about this season? The redemption. Oh my god. In the first episode, Porter got, re like, redeemed. He threw Bryce against the wall. He said, I got nothing to lose. You want to go, kid? And then he just did. He's like, 
he just brushed off his shirt he's like anyway get to class i'm like oh my god courtney we all hated courtney i hated courtney she went in that courtroom and fixed herself she loved hannah she needed to come out she did even though the defense made her come out kind of technically she's happy now she went with to, with a girl to the spring fling thing <laughs> bar spring fling thing um she's happy and she loved hannah so many people like were in love with hannah justin loved hannah at one point jess loved hannah alex loved hannah they both loved her as a friend clay was in love with hannah tyler was in love with hannah zach was in love with hannah bryce in his own twisted twisted way was in love with hannah what else do i love about this season Oh, no, let me talk about something else that I hate. Like, it's good. I love the way the show showed this. But I hate that it happened. The show is extremely good. But I hate how everyone, everyone treated Tyler. Like, I get it. He was a very pervy, taking pictures of everyone. But why does everyone treat him like he's less than them? Bryce was a rapist. People were still sticking kind of up for him, just throwing Tyler down. Courtney was defending a rapist in the first season. People were still throwing Tyler down. People just kind of treated Tyler worse than everyone else on the tapes, and everyone else did something too. I don't... And I'm so glad he got a friend, and that girl, his friend, and the sister, he had them, but then he kind of broke those ties because Tyler oh my god Tyler said I'm not self-harming I'm harming everyone else and that's why Porter was like you the principal you need to watch out for him but the principal was not doing that he kind of just sent him off god I hate that principal and then Tyler goes to spoilers shoot up the school <laughs> And Clay is like, hey, I know you're a good guy. You can't, you can't do this. You cannot. And it takes a long time, but Tyler stops. And I don't know what happens next because they decide to end the season like that. But Tony was there because, God, Tony is such a good friend. How did he even get to his car that fast? He, what, what's his name? Montgomery. Oh, my God. Montgomery is just as bad as Bryce. No, that's that's not true. That is not true. But he's up there. He's still supporting Bryce. Justin denounced him. And yes, he went to ju Juvie for letting the rave happen and being an accessory. But isn't Montgomery too? He was... Uh, I guess he didn't admit it. And no one except for Alex knew about it, but he was right there when Hannah got raped and he saw it. He saw it happen. You saw it on his face and he just went back inside. And Alex called him out on it and he's just like, no, nothing happened. He just kind of wanted to pretend like nothing happened, but it did. And Montgomery's out here harassing everyone for the whole season, trying to forget what he knows is true. That pe this they're horrible. And his dad is horrible because he beat the crap out of him. And then he still goes and attacks Tyler. And I want there to be repercussions for that. Because Tyler's not telling anybody anything. He's just keeping it inside. And that's why he's going out to attack these people. But then again, even if he tells someone, they're not going to do anything. As we've seen this whole show, no one's doing anything. And the people who do, they get, they get in trouble. Porter... Porter got fired for telling the truth on the stand, saying that the school should have done more. Girls got raped at the school, and the school got no repercussions. They got raped at the clubhouse, which was on school grounds. No one did anything. Tyler got his head beaten to a mirror, pumped over the toilet, got flushed. Then Montgomery shoved a mop up his butt until there was blood on it and then he was still bleeding when he got home 
it was horrible. And what's gonna happen to Montgomery? <laughs> yeah, Tyler was gonna go in and shoot him. And then he's like, yo, Clay, get out. I actually like you a little bit now, but like, you need to go. Clay's like, no, you can't do this. So what's gonna happen? Something needs to happen to Montgomery. Cause, God. I mean, Bryce, in his own way, understands he can't do anything right now. He knows. He said, I can't touch you. I'm on probation. He says to Montgomery, I'm not doing anything. And you shouldn't either. Bryce, in his own, again, very twisted way, knows he can't do anything. He's backing off. Montgomery's bringing everyone from baseball to do something. And not everyone who plays sports is rapist and an enabler. Scott said, I'm here because I'm not a rapist. Zach was trying to help Clay out because he's like, I don't want this to happen anymore. I'm not a rapist. I'm a good guy because he is. And you know, it's a good portrayal of the coach too because the coach, the coach gave Bryce access to the clubhouse. And those things were happening kind of under his watch. And part of him knew it. And he was just letting it go. Because that's his family. That's his team. And he did everything he could to manipulate everyone the whole season. He got Porter out of jail just so he would say, you owe me a favor. He guilted Zach to try and stay on the team. He's like, hey, I was there for you. Can you be here for me? Zach's like, hell no. Porter said, screw you. That coach is horrible. I didn't even have a plan of what to say. I think I've said a lot, but I have so much to say about this season. I think that's all I can say right now. I'll watch this over when I post it and see if I have to say anything else. Overall, I love this show, I love this season, and I love where they're gonna go with it. I need season three. This show was amazing. And it really talks about a lot of important things and I think that people who say it's bad a lot of their reasons they're taking it the wrong way they're taking the show the wrong way that's all I have to say so bye so like comment and subscribe I need to say that more like the video subscribe to my channel and comment what you think of what I said or what you think about the season down below